from faking videos and charitable donations to outright doxing someone to millions of viewers. It's safe to say, Airac's 14.9 million subscriber YouTube channel is an empire built off lies waiting to crumble down. He has been caught faking his videos. But he did dox somebody. His editors just turned this section on the map upside down and then photoshopped the forest on top of it. It's obviously fake, so why hasn't your channel been deleted? This proves he faked some of his content. You can count on me to not fake videos, unlike almost every other creator on the platform. Hi, I'm the Internet Anarchist. I create weekly YouTube documentaries, and today we'll be revealing how one of YouTube's largest creators, Airac, is a complete fraud and has been one from the very beginning. We'll go over how he faked charitable donations, doxed someone to millions of viewers, and has been faking his content from the beginning. On the 5th of April 2021, Airag would upload a video titled Cycling Across 38 Miles of Ice, where he claimed he was on a mission to donate money and support locals from a small town named The Angle, which tragically became isolated during COVID after Canada closed their borders. To say the town was suffering would be an understatement. At the beginning, a local named Greg Henham would take his 25-foot speedboat 40 miles across the lake in order to bring back essentials for his suffering community. However, as winter came along, the lake froze over, resulting in a last minute 30 mile ice road being created in order to connect the small community with the rest of the country. During Airax video, he claimed he would be risking his life to travel to the Angle in order to spend as much money as he could to try and support their local economy. Isolated from the rest of the world, there's a small place in Minnesota called the Angle. Parkour, here we go. Due to COVID restrictions in Canada, the Angle has turned into an island where nobody can come in and nobody can leave. Now they've lost over $10 million worth of normal tourist money. So our goal is to somehow get to the Angle and spend the most amount of money. Empty my bank account type of money. I mean, just shower them in cash, dude. All 17 of them. Now the only way to the Angle is a small ice road across a frozen lake. So in this episode, we'll be crossing the most dangerous ice road in the US. Whilst initially it seems like a great cause and overall positive challenge, several clues throughout the video would reveal a more sinister undertone, which involved major lies, doxing, and fake charity. But before we start debunking Airac's career, I want to give credit to Soggy Serial for being the first creator to cover a lot of the information I'm going to be sharing in this video and helping me with the research. The video starts off with Airac planning to ride an ice bike across the frozen lake in order to reach the village. I saw this video from the queue. He built this ice bike saw blade of death. So I'm thinking we build a couple of these and take these the 38 miles across the ice. Are these like easy to ride at all? Would walking be more efficient than this? <laughs> As the video went on, Eric, Phidias, and his friend Mac would start their journey to the angle. Eric made sure to create a sense of danger with an on-camera call about someone falling through the ice on an ATV. I think that the ice is literally just dissipating like crazy. What you were looking for to get to the angle, I totally understand that. It would definitely be quite the conquer. It's just the amount of water that's opening up and I don't want it to turn into a rescue mission by any means. So apparently somebody fell through the ice on an ATV and they're on a rescue mission right now. The ice at this place is melting like super quick and they don't want to let us cross at all. Like they don't want to even let us try. By six minutes into the video, Eric and his friends had arrived at the most northern point of the US and whilst outside constructing their ice bikes, we get a view of the outside of their accommodation. Houston found us because I posted an Instagram story. Turns out this entire trip would be completely impossible if it weren't for Houston. Keep these buildings in mind, as they are an important clue to proving this entire video series to be horribly staged. After constructing the bikes, they made their way to the lake, where eight minutes into the video, one of the bikes would begin to sink. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Back up, back up, back up, back up. Seriously. What am I supposed to do right now? <laughs> Oh my, oh my gosh. Yeah, let's try to pull it out, pull it out, pull it out. If we just pause the video here, we can see that at this point, the only part of the bike under the ice was the front wheel. However, with each video cut, it seems the bike becomes more and more submerged under the water. Oh my god. Oh my god.
Whilst based on the video alone, it would be hard to prove what really happened. Nevertheless, insiders confirmed that they dropped the bike on purpose, and the guide who was with them almost received a fine and almost lost his job. Following the staged sinkage, the other bike they took along also broke, leading the trio to head back to their accommodation, ending off the first video in the series. The following week on the 12th of April 2021, Eric would upload the second episode of the series, titled I Survived 24 Hours on Ice. It would be this very video where the lies and deceptions began to unravel. Four minutes into the video, they get connected with a local private pilot. Is that we found a plane um, and you can, you can pick you guys up tomorrow. So out of the 17 people that live at the angle, one of them is a pilot and he's able to find an airplane for us. Only problem. Bad news is he's gonna require at least $3,500 and there's about a 50-50 chance you guys will be able to land on the runway because of the ice. So regardless, I have to pay him the $3,500. Following this, they would go on to explain how the pilot wished to stay completely anonymous due to legal grey areas with where they were flying. So this pilot guy has chosen to stay completely anonymous because this whole flying into the angle thing is in the grey area of what's legal. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to put him in the video. He wants us to blur his face. Right. After this, Eric and his friend Max said this. To hide his identity, we agreed to call him in this entire video. Have fun blurring his face in the entire video, buddy. The reason I censored the name they quote agreed to use is because Eric and his friend Mac decided to use the real pilot's name throughout the entire video. And in Soggy Serial's video, he demonstrated just how damaging this docs really was. I'm not going to leak the name of the pilot, I'm gonna censor it out of respect for him, uh, but you can still find it in Eric's video. I mean, they fing chant it over and over again completely doxing the guy because when you know that there are only a handful of private pilots in that exact area then well leaking his name is like showing his pilot's license on screen so much so that to prove a point i just googled the name of the pilot with the location that they filmed this entire video in which i'll go into more later on and i instantly found the pilot Another point Soggy made was how Eric and Mac continuously talked down on the pilot and made it seem like he had no idea what he was doing, even going as far as adding a fake voiceover in the edit to make it seem like he didn't know how to fly a plane. Did they also keep trash talking the pilot for some reason and just bullying him? Plane barely works. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> he's, like, he's like talking up all this game about how sick he is at flying planes. Tries to start it, doesn't start it. <laughs> Which Surprise, surprise, is also completely disrespectful fake bullshit. See, according to my insider, and which I also suspected, this clip. Come on, stupid plane. <laughs> wow, why won't you start? God damn it. Fuck. Well, it's completely altered. See, this isn't what the pilot said. Eric asked someone to send him a fake voice memo so he could use it as a voice overlay and lie about the pilot getting pissed that the plane didn't start. You can tell me to not fake videos. Which is so messed up, especially after doxing him. So far so that the plane company they used now hates Eric for faking this entire section, lying about the plane not starting, and disrespecting and doxing the pilot like this. Anyway, after doxing and bullying the pilot some more, like a f***ing douchebag, ask God for permission to blame the plane. Turns to Eric and says, how do I fly this thing? <laughs> 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 just starts pushing buttons, circles the airport until he runs out of gas. Following this, they arrived at the angle. We did it. Sweet. Let's go. We did it. Let's go, baby. The angle. The angle. We're here. I, I mean, it looks kind of like everywhere else we were, but. This is where the video gets even more fraudulent, as Eric explains his mission in the angle once again. Now that we have made it to the angle, as I had previously mentioned, the goal was to empty the entire Iraq bank account in order to give back through the lack of tourism in the angle. So we, I mean, we had a lot of work to do. Firstly, we reserved the nicest cabin at the nicest resort on the entire angle. Cost a nice little chunk. Pausing here, you might realize something. Remember their accommodation, which I told you to remember at the start of the video? Well, this is the same place, meaning they aren't even in the angles. Instead, about 40 miles away at a resort named Sportsman Lodge. Keeping 
Bearing this in mind, let's just watch how willingly Eric and Mac will outright lie to the audience whilst pretending they were helping a community in need. Firstly, we reserved the nicest cabin at the nicest resort on the entire angle. Cost a nice little chunk. It's a cool cabin though. We also got his own entire cabin. Cue the HGTV style cabin tour. Beautiful view of the lake. Of these giant windows. Sleeps five people. We only have four. Later in the video, they head out to the restaurant, where they begin to get recognized by locals. See if you notice anything strange about this conversation. You guys are sticking out like a sore thumb by being here, because nobody from LA comes to sports no. You said that when you walked in, we're like, them guys ain't from me. In case you missed it, the local begins talking about how they stick out like sore thumbs. Following this, he mentions the location they really were at, Sportsman Lodge Resort. If you listen closely, you can hear the editor cut out his audio whilst the camera pans to Eric doing a fake laugh. Here's the clip again. You guys are sticking out like a sore thumb by being here, because nobody from LA comes to sports. No. You said that when you walked in, we're like, them guys ain't from me. Reliability and authenticity is not just key in the content we enjoy, but it's also key in legal representation. That's where today's sponsor Morgan & Morgan steps in to save the day, ensuring you understand the potential value of your injury claim and the path to rightful compensation. Morgan & Morgan is known for securing substantial settlements, like $12 million in Florida or $26 million in Philadelphia, which was 40 times the highest insurance offer. To make things even easier, Morgan & Morgan has modernized the injury claim process, meaning you can submit your claim and communicate with your legal team all from your smartphone. What's more, their service is risk-free. If you don't win your claim, you don't pay a dime. If you're seeking legal representation, America's largest injury law firm is just one click away. Fighting a big company takes a big law firm, and Morgan & Morgan being America's largest injury law firm, you can trust that you're in good hands and that they're perfect perfectly capable of handling whatever you need. You can start your claim over at forthepeople.com slash internet anarchist or head down to the links in the description. Anyway, let's head back into the video. For those of you who have seen Mr. Beast's Face Your Biggest Fear to Win $800,000 video, you would recognize Mac, who was the main contestant. Well, here's how far Mac is willing to go to straight up lie in order to get views. With our stomachs completely full of angle food, angular food. <laughs> is that funny? It's like triangle shaped everything. <laughs> we proceeded to the arcade. I cashed out, I think like $100 in quarter. Soggy Cereal did a great job at breaking down and proving beyond a doubt that Eric and his friends did not even touch foot in the angle, and that the resort was the same one they stayed at in the first episode. Guess what? When going through online pictures of the Sportsman Lodge Resort in Baudette, you can see that their cabins have the exact same interior design, bed sheets, windows, benches, fireplace, and wood as the cabins Eric lies about renting in the angle. Actually, everything he shows from now on is just part of this luxurious vacation resort 200,000 feet away from the angle. Such a coincidence that this exact shot of the angle swimming pool perfectly lines up with this shot of the swimming pool in the Sportsman Lodge Resort in Baudette. You can even see the same arcade up there. Ultimately, Eric's videos on the angle were a quick cash grab in disguise of a noble and charitable mission. It's clear by this point that Eric has no regard for the truth and is simply making content for the pure purpose of making as much money as possible with little to no regard for real Real content. Ironic, considering he likes to label himself as one of the only quote real YouTubers. Does Eric fake videos? This question triggers me because of the lengths that we go to to make sure that videos are not faked, unscripted, completely real. We'll like reshoot entire videos. We have people living in separate houses so that information isn't shared between myself and my friends. Like we go so far to make sure that videos are not fake, so no. You can count on me to not fake videos, unlike almost every other creator on the platform. I feel like I just started 100 beefs. Not sorry about it. If you thought the angle situation was bad, this was just one of many videos Eric has outright staged or faked, as Soggy Serial would also expose his I crossed America in a perfectly straight line video as completely fake as well. I'm standing at the northern border of America and I'm gonna cross the entire country in a perfectly straight line. Starting at three, two, one. <laughs> Now I've got all types of vehicles to go through mountains, rivers, canyons. The only rule is if I ever step outside this line, the video's over, I lose. Now before I set out on this journey, I did some quick maths. If I continue to only walk across this 1500 mile line, it would literally take me six months. So my friends are about to pick me up in our first video. 
Before we analyze the video, remember that this is one of seven videos on Airac's channel titled as Traveling in a Straight Line, and each series seems to be a marketing campaign for his limited time merch. You might have noticed that we're all wearing this custom Airac Across America uniform. Ah! Hats, hoodies, t-shirts. It's literally us on the shirt. This design is so sick. I'm so proud of how it turned out. It's available for 72 hours, and we would absolutely love if you caught the piece to support your boys. Please. Merch available top link in the description. We will appreciate Keep the merch in mind, as it will be mentioned later in the video. Anyway, the video starts out with Eric and his friend Mac from the last video explaining the stakes of the challenge. Oh, the terrain's gonna get back here. We're gonna do this all the way across America. We are not stopping until I literally touch the ocean on the other side of the country. We need to walk perfectly straight this way. And just so you know, the line we're using to cross the country has a half mile buffer zone on either side to avoid trespassing and make sure this mission is actually possible. And just so that you guys know this is 100% legit, I actually put the map to this route in the description. You can go try for yourself if you want. Despite including a map link in the description, it was just another ploy to try and make the viewer believe that it was real, as Soggy Serial managed to completely debunk the map in his recent video about Airac. Oh, so you see this daycare over here? Well, this daycare is at the start of his route, and he's driving down this road on the line. But now in the next shot where they're doing something very risky, oh no, Eric, watch out, he's gonna fall off the line and you're gonna fail the challenge. No! Uh, if you weren't already uh, 20 miles off the line at this point, which I could identify by the billboards in the back, the structure of the sign, and conveniently enough on Route 29, an interstate highway which goes south throughout multiple states. Now, this wasn't the only evidence pointing towards the line being fake. Later in the video, Soggy also discovers that they used Photoshop to manipulate the map in order to create fake obstacles for us to go straight is to go directly to the woods. That's what we're gonna do right now. Oh, you might be wondering why you would cross a frozen swamp in the middle of the night. It's for the line. But also this forest obstacle they talk about, well, it doesn't even exist. See, I knew that the editors of Eric were only going to show him allegedly driving over a screenshot of the route they linked in the description to make the video seem more legit. Uh, but I couldn't find this area anywhere along that route until i finally realized that his editors just turned this section on the map upside down and then photoshopped the forest on top of it you can tell me to not fake videos so this is literally my specialty this is what i do uh, they really screwed up there didn't they he really doesn't give a shit about either the line or the challenge and just wants to see his youtube stats with in mind just how blatantly Eric is willing to lie in order to fake his content, it would be no surprise if the rest of his Straight Line series were to be fake. A common defense I hear from Eric fans is that he used to be a genuine and real creator back when he used to sneak into events and parties. However, I received an email from a viewer that proves Eric has been a fraud from the beginning. In his 11 million view video titled, Sneaking into a Festival as a Fake DJ, Eric spends the whole video acting like him and his friends are sneaking into the festival festival, and the video actually seems quite believable until you go 3 minutes and 50 seconds in, when Eric's friends Mac and Tyler decided to jump a fence where, if you listen closely, there's fake police yelling added by the video editor to increase tension. Two, one, go. <laughs> Whilst the sound effect was misleading, it's not enough to prove the entire video as fake. But what is enough to prove it as fake were the multiple times they accidentally displayed their entry wristbands, meaning they paid for the ticket before entering and staged the entire sneaking in part of the video. And just a reminder, Eric published this video in November of 2021, right before his channel completely blew up. Up, up. Hey, my bowl of cereal. Wait, am I on Internet Anarchist's channel? Uh, hey, Internet Anarchist viewers. I snuck into this video to expose Eric for allegedly scamming his entire audience using false advertising for the merch he sold and excessively plugged during his fake Around the World in 30 Days challenge. I gave my YouTube password to Mr. Beast, who has agreed that I have 30 days to make it around the earth. Yeah, so during his fake 30 Days challenge, Eric not only abuses that FOMO marketing strategy with every video, 
merch only available during the holiday season. We're only making a limited quantity of these and they are gone forever. He also promises his viewers that if they buy these limited edition hoodies, they'd receive one with a unique serial number on its sleeve. Have a unique mafia number on the sleeve and are only available until the end of this month. <laughs> or as Eric puts it, your unique mafia member number. Every sleeve is marked with a mafia member number. If we this is your official membership, it's the mafia. Wow. I mean, we all know how much viewers care for personalized products from their favorite creators. Thanks, Eric. That is so cool. Except everybody got the number one on their sleeve. And I guess the Eric Mafia is now the Eric Nafia because they couldn't even get the packaging correct. Now, I don't know, but where I'm from, we call that false advertising. And that's illegal. Great job, Eric. Was marked with a Mafia member number. Because this is your official membership. All right, now that my job is done here, I'm off to eat some more cereal. And don't tell IA I uh, snuck into his video. With each day that goes by, it seems another Eric video is exposed for being fake or staged. It seems like Eric is also aware of this, as from the 5th of February, the date Soggy Serial uploaded his video, to the 8th of February, Eric deleted roughly 28 million views worth of content as seen on his social blade. Whilst Eric won't lose his audience, and his videos will still continue to gain millions of views, mainly due to iPad kids who simply play his videos on repeat and don't pay any attention to YouTube drama, he will will always be known to the older audience as a complete sellout, someone willing to do anything for views, even if that means lying to his entire audience and taking advantage of tragedy to make himself look like a hero. Click the video on screen to find out how Eric faked his 30 day across Europe series.